Hey all, hope you all are good. Welcome to my channel, Straight World of Coding. So in this series, I will be solving SQL lead code problems. So I have already solved few of the SQL lead code problems, and I will be solving few more, which will uh, contain diverse topics. So let's begin. So the first question is invalid tweets with ID one six eight three. So let's begin. So this question says we have a tweet table with column name tweet ID and content, and tweet ID is the primary key column. So we need to write a solution to find all the IDs of the invalid tweets, and the tweet is invalid. If the length of the characters used in content column is greater than 15, okay. So this is a simple problem in which we need to filter out a tweet is invalid whether the length of content is greater than 15. So let's write our code. So we just need to return the tweet ID from table tweets where uh, basically the length of column content. Should be greater than 15. So let's run our code to see whether it's correct or not. So as you can see here, its uh, length is strictly less than 15. You can see this is four, then space, which is equal to five, then three, eight plus one space nine, and then this five character, which counts for 40. If its length is greater than 15, it will also be considered as invalid. So let's uh, submit. Yeah. So here you can see. If, so let's move on to our next question. One three seven eight. Replace employee ID with unique identifier. So we have table employee with these two columns ID and name. We have another table employee unique with column names ID and unique ID. So the question says write a solution to solve the unique ID of each user. If the user does not have a unique ID, just re replace it with null. Okay. And the order of output doesn't matter. So here you can see employee have two uh, columns ID and name. And corresponding to each ID, we have a unique ID. So In output, we need to return the unique ID and the name. So, as you can see, uh, for ID three, eleven, and ninety, we have a unique ID one two three. So three, eleven, and ninety. Mir, Winston, and Jonathan has the ID, but Alice and Bob does not have ID. So here you can see its output is null. So basically, it's a um, we need to join these two tables using left join, and uh, yeah, we need to return name as well. Let's left join employee unit table. On e dot id equal to u dot id, and uh, seems okay. This is from this table. You can even write as u dot unique id and e dot name so let's run it to check whether the output is correct or not yeah so we have one test case that is passed let's click on submit so it shows the use of join condition so now let's move on to the next question that is product sales analysis its id is 1068 so we have a sales table with these columns sales id product id year quantity price and we have another table with product id and name the question says uh, write a solution to report the product name year and price of each sales id in the sales table so here you can see we have the sales table with these columns and we have product table with these two columns and the output says we need to bring product name we need to bring year and we need to bring the price okay so basically there will be a join between these two tables and nothing else is uh, asking this question uh, we need to return this way okay so let's write right we need to return product name column from product table we need to return year we need to return the price column from sales table let's join with product table on s dot say uh, product id equal to p dot product id and uh, yeah let's click on run okay the product name is seems good and uh, yeah let's click on submit So 
so this question is passed here you can see join and inner join means the same so the next question is uh, id 1581 customer who visited but did not make any transaction so we have uh, table visits with column name visit id customer id and another table is test transaction with column name transaction id visit id and amount and the question says uh, write a solution to find the id of all the users who visited without making any transaction and number of times uh, they have made these kinds of visits so okay so here you can see we have table input and with column visit id and customer id and transaction with column transaction id visit id and amount so basically we need to find out all the customer id who have visited without making any transaction well he basically doesn't he or she doesn't made any purchase so basically there will be a join between these two and uh, yeah we need to find out the basically the visit id which does not have a transaction so here you can see this 512 are the unique visit id so this these customer this customer and this customer made the transaction so we need to find out who doesn't have made any transaction so let's write it select we need to return the customer id and the number of visit so basically uh, let's first uh, join the table and then we'll write the logic so let's join transactions key on yeah v dot visit id equal to v dot visit id with the condition where when you will join okay we need to find out who does not need any transaction so when you will combine we will get the um, we will get visit id uh, basically the uh, transaction visit id will be null okay so we need to filter out by that so t dot visit id is null we need to group by group by as you can see we need to group by by customer id and we will here take the count so what we have done we had basically <coughs> we have basically grouped by all the customer who doesn't made any visit and taken the count star of it so here it says the answer is wrong okay okay the column name should be as this so let's rerun the code okay it's accepted let's click on submit it now let's move to the next question with id 197 rising temperature so we have a table with us with column names id record date record date and temperature we need to find out all the dates who has higher temperature as compared to the previous date so here you can see in the question the on second we have a uh, we have temperature higher than the previous one on first similarly fourth uh, id 4 has a higher temperature as third so basically here we will use the um, lag um, concept so we will what we'll do we will shift all the records by one below and we will subtract it to see whether the difference of the temperature is greater than zero and the difference between the dates should be equal to one so what we will do let's write the logic here we basically need select id we need the record date but we will also need to uh, shift all the temperature by one uh, shift all the dates so that we can find out the difference by one one we need to write the logic we should be order by uh, it should be record date only and in ascending order then let's let's write temperature we will all also be shifting the temperature lag temperature by one over we will um, just order by with record date only in ascending order from uh, from what the table name is weather and we should also give these columns uh, uh, as a name let's say as r1 so this is basically writing uh, areas of this function and let's say we will give this temperature uh, column name as 
p1 so let me show you what it basically returns select star from cte so here you can see all the dates and all the temperature will be shifted by one so here you can see this temperature has been shifted to below this is here this is here okay and similarly you can see the temperature has been shifted by one below so what we will do we will basically find a difference between the record date and r1 column which will be equal to one and the temperature difference between temperature and the t1 column should be equal greater than zero so what we will do select id from ct where difference we will what we will do we will just subtract it uh, we will just subtract the first we will subtract the temperature minus t1 should be greater than zero and the day difference date diff between record date and r1 column should be equal to one so let's see we are whether we are getting the expected output or not let's click on submit so here we have seen a beautiful concept of lag function similarly we have lead function which shifted the all the values depending upon how much we want to shift up lag shift down lead shift up now let's move to the next question that is with id 1661 average time of process per machine so we have a table named activity with the column name machine id process id activity type timestamp uh, this is the description of all the columns which says uh, machine id is the id of the machine process id is the uh, id of the process running on machine activity type is basically the start and the end the start means the machine starts the process at given timestamp and means the machine ends the process at the given timestamp and obviously the start timestamp will be always before the end timestamp okay so we need to find out uh, average time of each machine it takes to complete the process so basically we will be using uh, and okay we need to round the uh, output to three decimal places and uh, what else it says okay the result can be okay so here you can see uh, 0th machine is running to process basically this is uh, process id 0 and process id 1 and this is the corresponding start and the end time similarly machine 1s do the same job similarly machine 2 does the same job and we need to find the um, average time stamp so here you can see in the explanation um, yeah so you can see machine 0 what it does basically is it start uh, basically it's a difference between the uh, end minus start so here you can see this is end minus start end minus start plus end minus start so it, it is basically averaging out all the process so here you can see yeah here you are seeing all the average time it is taking so let's write our code uh, uh, basically what we need to do we need to find out the sum of uh, the total time taken by each machine id to complete the process so basically we will be taking the summation what we will be doing we will be uh, first adding these two and subtracting it with start activity type start so let's uh, let me show you what we will do we will do the select uh, machine id comma we will use the sum with case statement so when the activity type equal to we will do it case when activity type equal to uh, end then it will be uh, then it will be timestamp else it will be negative minus one star of timestamp and we will write end that will denote the end of case statement let's write as s1 but also we need to find out the average from where two will come from so it will be basically count star okay so we will do write count star and okay there will be four process okay here you can see two zero and two one so we need to basically divide it by two to get the one pro uh, basically one activity for id zero this is one activity and this is the another activity let's write from let's say okay as c1 we are writing an alias from table activity and group by uh, machine id so in order to generalize you what i'm writing this clips to select star from cte so basically what it is returning here you can see so here you can see it has basically returned the difference 
first difference between all the activity type as start for a particular machine id this is basically summation of end minus summation of start and c1 represents the total count of the total activity running so in zero machine id zero there are two two activity running similarly in activity uh, machine id one two and similarly machine id two we have two activity running and it says we need to round out uh, basically uh, round off to two decimal places okay the output so what we will do we will use the round function with s1 divided by c1 with 3 and the uh, column name will be processing id so let's see if the output matches with the expected output yeah and then click on submit so basically what we have done basically we in uh basically here we have used the sum function with k statement so that alternatively we can subtract the start activity type from end activity type okay got it so now let's move on to the next question with id 577 employee bonus so, so we have table employee with these columns employee id name supervisor salary and bonus table with employee id and bonus we need to write a solution to report the name and the bonus account for each employee with bonus less than 1000 okay so here you can see um, id2 has uh, bonus less than uh, 1000 and his name is uh, Dan so here you can see Dan but here we are also getting John and Bradley because they haven't received the bonus so we need to return their name as well so here you can see uh, uh, yeah they have employee ID of 1 and 3 so let's write it down select name comma bonus from table employee we need to basically do a uh, left join with the table bonus on column e dot uh, employee ID equal to b dot employee ID yeah where uh, bonus will be less than 1000 or bonus is null so let's see what's the expected output and it has passed let's uh, click on submit so basically when you will filter bonus less than 1000 the null values will, will not be populated so in order to populate the null value who doesn't receive any bonus okay uh, and it will come through this condition so hope you like this video continue to support me by clicking on like and subscribe we will be solving few more questions from the sql lead code uh, series so click on not uh, notification button in order to be aware about whenever i upload a any new video have a nice day